thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk the Talk with me, Desh Palay Bechen. So viewers, again, this is a very special interview for me personally, as Dirk van der Valt, who is the co-owner of We Buy Cars, has been another instrumental part of my journey as a journalist in motoring South Africa. Dirk and his brother Fan, who by the way, sat with me for one of my very first interviews, are two men that I truly admire and appreciate for always going the extra mile to support me with my initiatives. Dirk and Fan currently employ more than 800 individuals, many of whom are women, might I add, and these numbers are growing rapidly. They believe in strong ethics and sound philosophies. They invest in the growth of their staff and their personal and professional development. They strongly believe that their success comes from surrounding themselves with the right people. My personal opinion of Dirk. So, the saying a leader is born, not made, truly applies strongly here. Great leaders are integral to the success of a business, yes. But whilst the best leaders have many common assets, there are various effective approaches that Dirk adopts when de dealing with staff, colleagues and suppliers. Whilst there are definitely inherent personality characteristics that might help one to lead a team, people like Dirk are more likely to step up and take the reins than others. He also comprehends that leadership alters with time. The market is constantly evolving and with it so has his vision for the company, hence the extraordinary success of We Buy Cars. I will never forget the day that I first met Dirk. He took me on an interesting and awe-inspiring tour of their large showroom floor. What will always stay prevalent in my mind though is his kind and humble nature and his incredibly humanitarian qualities. So without further delay, please stay tuned as we introduce you to Dirk van der Waalt. And this interview is proudly brought to you by Sariti Solutions. Hello, Dirk. <laughs> Yes, thank you. It's a privilege to be here. Oh, thank you so, thank you, thank you so much for everything that you have contributed um, towards my journey. And from the first time I met you, as I said earlier on, you have been, um, um, you know, not just instrumental, but it's men like you that I, that gave me faith that I can do this. So mm -hmm. thank you for mm -hmm. that. But I want to talk about you today. Okay, let's start with where did your journey in motoring begin? Desh, it's a, it's a very, very long story, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> We've got time. <laughs> um, well, uh, it started out in the very beginning when, uh, you know the story of Fani and now Fani started buying cars uh, while he was still at school. I mm -hmm. think he bought his first unit in Standard 8. Mm -hmm. What's that? That's grade 10. Grade 10. You know? <laughs> and I, I was studying at Takis and I was, uh, I took a job, uh, I was studying part-time, I had a full-time job and so on. And I left that job, I was without a job and Fani asked me to come and help him. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you buy and sell cars, you need someone to help you drive, drop you off, to pick up a car and so on and so on. So I started helping Fani and uh, there was only a three or four months of that before Fani was leaving for the UK. Mm -hmm. And then Fani gave me the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, 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 to go on with this small, very, very small little business for the next two years on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's where it started. Wow. We, 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 um, back then we were basically just bargain hunting. That mm -hmm. was what we were doing. We, mm -hmm. we were standing in the queues uh, while it was still dark, four o'clock in the morning, in front of Junk Mail and Pretoria News, trying to get the copies first mm -hmm. and to buy bargains. Mm -hmm. And there was, uh, I think that was around about 1999. Mm -hmm. And then the market changed. Uh, the, the classified market changed a lot. People changed, things in the country changed. And all of a sudden, everybody that got a package from their work or something, you know, everybody tried their hand at buying and selling cars, where previously we were just a handful of people in, front, in the queue in front of junk mail in the mornings, uh, they were like, all of a sudden the queue, the, the queue that was 40 people uh, deep 
people buying furniture and parrots mm -hmm. and dogs. Mm -hmm. Really, there are people right. specializing right. in buying parrots and dogs mm -hmm. and furniture and mm -hmm. home appliances. Mm -hmm. They're all standing in the queue. And there's only like three or four or five people who's, who's buying cars. Mm -hmm. That changed quickly and it became a queue of 400 people of who a lot were, were, were buying cars. Mm -hmm. And the classified industry changed and uh, most of the cars that you saw advertised there were not private sales, mm -hmm. but uh, people who were dabbling, or not, you know, people that were buying, trying to make a buck, mm -hmm. trying to survive mm -hmm. and buying and selling cars. So mm -hmm. it changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to adapt quickly and mm -hmm. change the modus operandi. Mm -hmm. And so we started advertising in, 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 in various ways. Mm -hmm. So Doug, tell us more about We Buy Cars and uh, your role in the company. And I know you're talking a bit about marketing and that changed drastically when we went from print, trunk mail um, and the likes to digital. And I think uh, your approach to this has been phenomenal. Hence, as I said earlier, on the success of We Buy Cars. So mm -hmm. tell us more about your role and, and how you've contributed to this change. Look. Um, we Buy Cars is already older than 20 years, mm -hmm. so my role has changed a lot over the years, I would say, maybe. And when you talk about my role, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question. Fani, Fani is the uh, dynamo of the company. Mm -hmm. He's the, the man that makes everything happen, and he's an extremely dedicated, hardworking person, highly disciplined, uh, structured uh, person mm -hmm. and extremely dedicated and, 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 and I owe an incredible lot to him due to the fact that, that he instilled in us, all of us involved in the company, that discipline. Mm -hmm. However, and I think this is a central message to, if, 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 if I were to convey a message to people out there, mm -hmm. I would emphasize the idea that it takes a little bit of everything, you know, and, and, and uh, there's a thing called ambidextrous leadership. Okay. Ambidextrous leadership, so the ambidexterity refers to being able to use both hands or to kick a rugby ball with both your mm -hmm. feet, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you, whatever your strengths are, is, in my view, sort of, maybe, indicative of what your weaknesses are. Mm -hmm. Because if you're strong on the one side, you're probably you're probably lacking a little bit on the other side. Okay. So I think it was fortunate uh, for We Buy Cars that w w where Fani is such an extremely strong, uh, uh, dedicated, hardworking person, I brought a bit of out-of-the-box thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I'm not so aversive to change. I am someone who loves to explore. Mm -hmm. so, so when you look at ambidextrous leadership, uh, the two, the two poles or the two hands in ambidextrous leadership is on the one hand exploration that is creativity uh, uh, innovation uh, looking 360 degrees to the environment looking for changes and all that sort of thing and adapting quickly to the outside environment mm -hmm. whereas exploitation is the other other side of the coin to exploit mm -hmm. so exploit is to use the opportunities the actual the actual hard work and discipline of uh, expo exploit exploring uh, not exploring but exploiting what you've already explored mm -hmm. If, if I'm making any sense, it does. It um, does. So, so uh, I'm I'm strong on creativity and innovation, and I love to explore new things and to look out for in what ways we need to change, where we need to go, and and, and, and that sort of thing. Mm. So you know the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Uh, there's a book. I think the guy's surname is Spencer, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. He wrote the very well-known book, Who Moved My Cheese? Because mm -hmm. your, your cheese keeps on moving. Yeah. Yeah. Someone steals your cheese mm -hmm. and takes it to a different place and you're sitting with the wrapper, you know? Yes. So yeah, you have to adapt constantly. And yes. we were lucky uh, and blessed that we were able to adapt swiftly to changes in the, in, in the marketplace. I think it's very important. That's a very important lesson to learn, mm. um, especially with our changing times. And one of my leaders and gurus, uh, Nico Els, which is my husband's boss, always says that um, the only thing that's constant in life is change. You've got to learn how to adapt. So, um, Dirk, you have an extremely unique way um, in approaching business. Why so? Um. 
I personally, you know, people, people always, uh, when they think about business and making money, they think that you have to sort of rig the game and play the game. There's a game that's on, you know, and you have to find out how to press the buttons of any particular game. Whereas my approach is that I think people are, people are intelligent and people see through you mm -hmm. or they see who you really are. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, to put it pretty bluntly, I think there's a market for integrity. There's a market for being genuine and to be sincere and to be transparent and to be who you really are and not to not to take the, 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 the um, you know not to uh, try and adapt too hard, too hard to, you know to, 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 to assimilate to a certain game especially mm. in the sales world mm. where sales people need to learn the ropes of sales mm, mm, mm. you know my solution is you know walk in the customer's moccasins walk in his shoes yes. and if you can do that well you should understand what the customer's needs are mm -hmm. and then you can cater for those needs in an honest and sincere way mm -hmm. and if you are a good communicator if you're able to communicate well you can communicate that to the customer mm -hmm. understand what better thing can you possibly do than to communicate to the customer that i really truly do understand your place and your position and your experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we are ready and set to respond to your need in, in a genuine way, yes. you know, trying to solve. I, you know, in a competitive environment, people sometimes lose focus and focus on the competition. Mm -hmm. They are the enemy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I accentuated to our people that it's really necessary that you understand the competition is not your enemy. Mm -hmm. Your customer's problem is the customer's enemy. Mm -hmm. And that enemy is also your enemy. Mm -hmm. So your, your enemy is the customer's problem. And you need, to, you need to keep your focus firmly on the customer's problem, solving the customer's problem. If we can solve the customer's problem, there will always be a market for what we do. Mm -hmm. Wow, profound. So the customer's problem is actually your enemy. Mm. I love that, I love that. So what is, or what would you think is your greatest achievement? Um, in business? The greatest achievement? Oh, it's a very difficult Let's question. not talk about we buy cars achievement. Years, right? <laughs> Let's not talk about we buy cars, mm. okay, and, and the achievement of, and the success of we buy cars. Let's talk about Dirk. What is your personal achievement? I, I like to read a lot. Uh, mm. I have a keen interest in trying to understand how things work and why, why things work the way they do. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. And that process just never stops. Ever. So if you keep on learning, you will find yourself feeling as if you know less and less and less. You're more and more and more challenged, the more and more you learn. You never stop learning. Mm. And um, I think the most important thing that we've embraced in business is to understand that business is not about business. Business is about people. And I think the most important thing that I've learned is that your employee is also your customer. Mm -hmm. Your employee is also your customer. Yes. And I think if you read enough business literature, you will realize that or you see uh, that in all likelihood, your, your employee will treat your customers the way you treat them. So if you're really if you if you're really concerned about your end customer, then you need to look after your employees. And so I would say, you know, um, embracing that, understanding that, and and utilizing that is an achievement in a certain way, maybe. I, uh, and uh, you know, it's like a marriage. If you, I think, I think, you know, making your marriage last, mm -hmm. and I think that's an achievement. And the, the marriage between me and Fani is, 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 is probably my greatest success to make that marriage last. <laughs> well, maybe that's a bit of a co controversial thing to say, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it takes mutual uh, effort to make a relationship last. You know, partners, the, the, I think there's very few, partner, partnerships in business have a tendency not to last mm -hmm. because it puts a, a relationship to extreme tests, mm -hmm. like a marriage. And that's why I would say that is um, um, 
You know, I, I really respect and adore Fani as a person. He's a, he's a true and genuine and honest and goodness person. He's a, he's a wonderful person, a very capable person, extremely capable person. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great honor to, uh, an undeserved and a great honor to be associated with Fani in business. Wow, wow. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not just saying that. It's no, no, truth, I know. You know yeah. I know Fani yeah. personally. I know your sister personally. And um, I've worked with both of them and you. Uh, ironically, it's because of you I know them. But um, I think that um, those integrity or the, the values you talk about has been instilled in the three of you from somewhere. Maybe your dad, Corvus, and your mom who's been a strong uh, motivator for Lurika as well. And I think when we talked about this earlier on, we talked about uh, uh, someone at your, um, uh, in your organization, Pranella Naidu, that I actually interviewed and she's made it to the top 40 of the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards. And um, she talked about the culture of the business and what you say now resonates because she talks about leadership and how it has a ripple effect in the business. And I think all of this contributes to the success of We Buy Cars. So hats off to you, well done. Well done on that marriage between you and Fani. I've been married for 19 years. I know it's a, it's a hard work. And tolerance, tolerance is very important. Compromise is very important. So I get that. But who has been um, an inspiration to you? Um. I, I have many sort of heroes. I've got a hero for uh, different things, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but to, to, I think that's a question that I really wouldn't be able to answer properly because I don't really have a big time hero right. that I look up to. Mm -hmm. um, I think your heroes are often much closer to you than what you think. Mm -hmm. uh, so I look up to Fani, I look up to my father. And I look up to my wife mm -hmm. for certain things, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, as, uh, as far as business is concerned, I, there's some people that I would revere in, in a business sense and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, some gurus that I, that I enjoy listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I don't think my life is really driven by, by, by yeah. euros or, or things like that. But, you know, we've, our father uh, brought us up as uh, the main the main focus is to be able to think for yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, we're a little bit rebellious. <laughs> in the, in we, we've been we've been brought up to think for ourselves, and I would have credited my father for for that really. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's so important not actually to put someone on the pedestal because if that person makes a mistake, it destroys you. Mm. I've had that with some icons that I held in very high regard. And unfortunately, they've made some moves in their mm. lives that um, I, I really do not admire. So, yeah. Um, in terms of the gurus you were talking about, we have something in common. We both follow uh, you to a small extent, me to a very big extent. Uh, Isat Guru that we talked mm. about in his uh, mystique ways of life. You, you almost <laughs> fell backward when, 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 when you told me about him and I told you what his real name is yeah. in real life. <laughs> he's Yagi Sadurev. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's yeah. an amazing... Um, uh, um, guru to follow. I mean, yeah. I think his, his values or his life lessons resonates with people like us that are trying to, to lead by example. Mm. So I think that's very important. The next question I would like to ask you is very important because we would like to see very successful people coming up the ranks. And I want to ask you what mistakes have you made along the way that we can help our viewers to, you know, not make those mistakes. <laughs> um. I think most of your viewers would be either people employed in, 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 in motor vehicle industry or people leading in, in motor vehicle industry. Now, we buy cars. Um, I think our exponential growth started mostly due to the fact that we had no choice but to bring fresh people from outside into our business. And um, Alon Rees, I can't, it's a race core. Mm -hmm. Alon Ries of Ries Corps, he wrote a little book, mm -hmm. Drop the Business Plan. Mm -hmm. And I read that little book, Fani read that little book. Mm -hmm. We looked up to Alon Ries and what he was doing. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't join him at that stage or, or, or submitted to his programs. We, we should have, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, in that book, he propagates the uh, principle that you should, as a business leader or as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you should work on your business and not in your business. Mm -hmm. We were solidly working in the business right. the whole time. Right. Now, when you, and if you are able to make that shift to um, trust other people to do, trust other people with your baby, you know, mm -hmm. Because up until that moment, yeah. it's your baby. Yes. No one knows how to do this exactly the way you like to do it because you know exactly how it needs to be done because you, you invented it. You <laughs> right, know? right. So it's very, very hard to let go and to send someone else into the field to, to, to do the job that you've always been doing. Mm -hmm. But as an entrepreneur in the beginning of the business, you are everything. You know, you, you're the secretary, you are the salesperson, you're the admin, you're the every, everything. everything, you do everything yes. yourself. Yes. And at some point you have to start to delegate. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we, we should have done that much earlier, oh, wow. you know? So wow. I think if you can get over the fear of uh, trusting other people yes. and over the fear of recruiting other people mm -hmm. and training other people to do your job, I think that is one of the things that you need to do first. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if we knew the importance of data, and gathering data and how to set up a system to accumulate uh, clean data. Mm -hmm. That is extremely important, you know, to, uh, in the very beginnings of a business, you don't think of things like that because you don't need it. You, you don't understand the reason why you should have a data base and a data system. Mm -hmm. But a little bit later, and then all of a sudden you wish you had a good, proper, clean uh, data system. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say those two things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, employing people, delegating responsibility, trusting people, yes. uh, understanding people, knowing how to delegate work and managing people. Mm -hmm. I would say understanding people so that you can work with people, yes. communicate goals, motivate, inspire, onboarding, engagement of employees. That's vital, that's crucial. If you yes. could manage to understand that, yes. um, that'll bring you very, very far. So yeah, I think the process of recruitment, I've got a lot to say on that, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, <laughs> I, right. think, I think people don't realize the importance of, 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 of recruitment. Mm -hmm. And I would say sorry to the peop professional people in the recruitment, <laughs> but I think the, the entrepreneurs and the professionals need to also start thinking outside of the box. Yes. And have the guts to be yourself and do it your own way mm -hmm. but you need to spend a lot more time on the recruitment and you have to have a strategy mm -hmm. a way of getting those people that you really really want and you need to know mm -hmm. exactly what you want in a person and the person that you employ needs to reflect your values they need to re represent you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there are ways if you really set well if you're a successful entrepreneur then you would know how to apply your mind and find ways, spend more critical time on how, why, when, where, how you're going to meet the sort of people mm -hmm. that you want to employ. Mm -hmm. I would say get rid of the traditional way of adver adver recruitment by advertising, you know, put an advert in mm. there and um, looking through 20 CVs and then interviewing five people and then you choose between those five people. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if you look at it objectively, that's not the way you would do it if you would really, really rationalize it. If you know how important that appointment is, you would spend a lot more time on it. Mm -hmm. Because the people that you employ are the building blocks of a company. Yes. And I think that's the biggest secret of We Buy Cars is the loyalty. Mm -hmm and the uh, dedication, mm -hmm. the commitment of our employees. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I would like to give a standing ovation to our employees for their hard work, yeah. extremely hard work and dedication that came from them because we were very blessed and fortunate that we got the right people. Yes. We, 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 we've got some of the best people. Yes. We recently uh, had an uh, outside person come in and evaluate all our people on certain metrics mm -hmm. and she gave us feedback that she was actually really delighted and she said that you've got an extraordinary group of people here and all the tests that we've done on all the people <laughs> if I may call it tests you know it's yes. personality analysis yes. and those things yes. um, 
psychometric testing, psychometric, everything. We, right. we, we, we did the whole thing. It was a, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that, that was her conclusion. She, 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 have, she affirmed that we, we have a very, very wow. special group of people together. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that was entirely intentional. Mm -hmm. I think we, 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 we were very, very blessed. That, mm -hmm. But the thing is, if you have the right people, they tend to bring in more of the right people. So yes. if you get it right, right in the beginning, and you work on your company culture, you yes. need to work on your company culture. Mm -hmm. um, they, 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 there's the most beautiful company culture leaders in our, in our country as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an ex-Zimbabwean, uh, uh, Hilton Barbour, mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how you pronounce his surname. Mm -hmm. He's a Canadian guy from Zimbabwe, Hilton Barbour. He's a, he's a company culture specialist. And we have our own Colin Brown, Happy Happy Sandpit is the company's name. Those are people that we've, that I personally follow for company culture issues and so on. So, yeah, I think uh, employees, uh, onboarding, engagement, recruitment, I can't over the importance of that. Mm -hmm. Wow, but in, in, in regarding what you just said now, and as I said earlier on, I have interviewed um, one or two of your staff uh, members and you talk about the culture and the culture is there. And we talked about the ripple effect and the leadership and the quality. What is it, do you think, what are the key things um, or the key, the, the fundamental reasons for them being so happy, passionate? Um, so much so that their loyalty is unquestionable. Because you know, these people could, without you being there, say to me, listen, because I'm a journalist, you know, and they could say, nah, they're not really that nice people, but <laughs> that's not the case here. Uh, we've had, I think we've got 10 women um, that have made it to the, to the uh, finals of the Motoring Woman of the Year. Which obviously, we have uh, um, identified and we have gone through the entire, uh, um, you know, the criteria for... Um, for them progressing to this level um, and so we had to do interviews with some of them they all say the same thing so what is it do you believe that you've done right to make them happy keep them happy I honestly think that it's not that we've done a lot right mm. I think we've done a lot wrong as well okay. but <laughs> there's I think people sense with the leadership and we buy cars a certain sense of humility okay. and sincerity, right. and that's all. I think <clears throat> I think it's only uh, humility and sincerity that they sense uh, that cause them to be loyal because they they the the the, the leadership is not uh, um, uh, in, inapproachable. Um, they are, they are uh, warm and perfectly human and, and uh, um, involved, you know. So, so it, I think it's, that's all I can say really, you know. It's, recently we've, we've, we've really um, gotten better at the whole thing of managing people and, and, and um, understanding the mm -hmm. people dynamic better. And, um, but yeah, up to now, the, the, the loyalty that we've had from our staff, sometimes is in, in spite of our, uh, our um, um, and not because of, you know. In spite but, of, okay. But I think it is because they love, they love Fani and they love the management structure. It's, mm -hmm. it's a real loyalty based on, 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 on um, Values. Yeah, there we they, go again. They, they, they like. <laughs> they, they, they associate with the values and the value system and the ethics yes. of of the company. Uh, I, I think I think we could do a lot more mm -hmm. to give them more recognition and to understand them better and to have more quality interaction with them mm -hmm. um, and to understand understand their frustrations better and to equip them better to do their work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places where we can improve. Wow! Wow! And there, as I said earlier, there we go again you um, giving credit, all the credit to Fan. I love Fan, okay, but you, I think you need to take ownership of some of this credit. You have been so instrumental. You talked about this in the, in the, in the beginning of this conversation, mm. how the two of you complement each other and how both 
sides, what's the word? Embridex. Ambidextrous. That Ambidextrous. word, yes, that yeah. word. <laughs> so I think it's important that you both have brought this, um, this, you know, important factors that contributes to your staff being happy and being um, just, just being comfortable. Comfortable, that's the word. They're in their comfort zone at We Buy Cars and, and they just want to empower the company. That's an, an amazing thing. Look, talking about women, you have plenty of women in management roles um, and you are great. You and Fana are great champions for uh, and, and catalysts for change um, for women empowerment as well in the industry as a whole. Why? Why so? Tell us. Tell our viewers why women should be in this industry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but I have to bring it back again to ambidextrous leadership. It's like two sides of a coin. Mm -hmm. That's why you have uh, two people in a marriage. Maybe some people have more, but 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 fact of the <laughs> matter is, uh, you know, women bring something very special to the um, to the equation, mm -hmm. and I think men traditionally have totally neglected the importance of that, and we are now starting to realize the importance of having women in the industry because men in a boardroom situation, they behave differently when there's some women in, 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 in the company. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm just, so I just think that the dynamic is more complete when the women are present, when, when, we, when we have women in our leadership, then I think there's, there's a little bit more sensitivity, a little bit more, uh, care taken, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a little bit less ego involved, mm -hmm. I think. Maybe I'm wrong, I could well be wrong. Maybe it depends on, 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 on the specific situation. Yes. But um, maybe it also speaks to um, the sense of honesty and humility and uh, sincerity. Uh, and ambidextrous leadership shows that, you know, you, 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 you need to uh, be more cognizant of the spectrum of people that you're dealing with mm -hmm. and if you are overbalanced to or not overbalanced but if you are off balance to some side then that will have repercussions mm -hmm. I think for instance you know if you have a business that consists mostly of accountants mm -hmm. or mostly of engineers mm -hmm. then there's a good chance that the common denominators that made those people accountants or engineers will have a certain there's a certain dynamic that follows it automatically and if they are not cognizant of their weaknesses uh, which is in all likelihood the opposites of their strengths mm -hmm. you know so it's the same thing uh, with with men and women mm -hmm. men are strong on certain mm -hmm. aspects of life Absolutely. and women are strong on other aspects of life mm -hmm. and if men think they can completely uh, you know function in a in a in a, in a uh, balanced way without women, they're making a mistake. Uh, we as people are men and women. Yes. We, need to, we, need, we need to bring that duality back into business. Yes. Why not? We have to bring it back into all leadership. Yes, I love that. Um, it's so important. I always say it on the show that men and women bring equal to the table. Mm. Something different. Women have empathy. We have, um, we're very creative. We, 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 we look at things differently and men do too. And both both of those qualities empowers um, the equation, so that's amazing. Look, you talked earlier on about we buy cars not um, giving enough recognition to people that are working for the company, okay? However, you have been one of the men that was really a champion for the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards. Um, fun as well, he, when he was here, he said, okay, I need to nominate. How do I, not, last year we were not welcome to nominate for the awards. How do I do this? And literally within a week or two, you and your brother sent me nominations. Um, so yes, you have been, um, I think this was a platform for you to recognize, which you're, which you're doing, um, uh, you know, some woman in the in, in the business. So a few of your ladies have obviously been nominated and they've made it through to the top. Uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about this initiative, um, which is sponsored by Nedbank? I feel it's a great initiative and I think there is absolute a market for it and mm -hmm. I think there's a great need for it. Um, you know, it's 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 a uh, it's hard enough already to find the right people. So it can only benefit you to to broaden the scope of people that you 
want to incorporate into the into your mix yes. and in our experience it's only worked out very well mm. and I think a lot of the problems we have in the industry is as a result of that you know uh, e um, egotism you mm. know so yeah it's time to rationalize the the scenario and to be more open and a little bit more liberal mm -hmm. uh, and more, a little bit more accommodating mm -hmm. and they will it will most certainly bear great fruit in my opinion. Oh, thank you so much and what advice can you offer um, to the young and upcoming women um, in the motoring industry or even those that aspire to be in the motoring industry of South Africa what words of encouragement can you offer to them? Well um, the I know some very successful women, especially in We Buy Cars, there are some very successful women. And what I said earlier about um, uh, not being afraid of being yourself, being unique, being different, I think women should stop caring so much about what the perceptions are and what the presupp presuppositions, the, 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 the preconceived ideas are. Uh, there's a lot of change happening. Um, so you should not just assume that you'll have a hard time and that people have this and that preconceived ideas. Why not ask them? Mm -hmm. Ask them before you just assume <coughs> that you are um, uh, up against the whole world. Mm -hmm. There's yes. a whole world of support out there as well. Absolutely. You know? So the most important thing is to be yourself no matter what they say. Right. Don't right. compromise on your values. and. Don't just assume that you're going to have to work three times as hard to, you know, you know that attitude. Don't do that. No. Rather, rather focus on becoming a good communicator. Mm -hmm. Rather focus on having difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. Focus on w w something that you could Google that's beneficial, I think, is uh, up management. How to do up management. Mm -hmm. That's most important. Mm -hmm. So, up management is about how do you communicate with your, your um, direct um, with your, um, what's the right word I'm looking for? Your boss, your person that superior, you report, yeah. you know, your superiors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we earlier spoke about Brene Brown and vulnerability, um, mm -hmm. and she's all about uh, having difficult conversations, having the guts to be vulnerable and to have those difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. So I would most certainly advise you to listen, Brene Brown, mm -hmm. and be a little bit vulnerable and have difficult conversations. Do up management. Uh, don't be afraid to ask what's expected. Ask, uh, you know, bounce your, your ideas of what your perceptions are of the people that you uh, work with. And if, if what transpires is not to your liking, then maybe you're not in the right workplace. Mm -hmm. So I think we should really all, in all aspects of all our relationships, try and become better communicators. And sometimes the only problem is that you, you have to create space and opportunity to have a difficult conversation. And the most, the, the, the most difficult part of difficult conversations is how do you start them, how do you get into the difficult conversation. And there may be many ways of doing it, but many ways of asking questions in a neutral way. So I would say, you know, you could ask, you, you could start by asking, is it possible that we could explore this and that area a little bit? That's a neutral way of saying, I want to talk a little <laughs> bit about, so your perceptions, what do you think, what do you feel, where are you? Mm -hmm. um, what Brene Brown says is that you, you, that you must ask the other person to, to recite to you sort of the conversation they are having in their own heads mm -hmm. on that issue. If you can get them to tell you what is the self-talk that they are having on that issue, then you can understand the, the, the issue better. Mm -hmm. So anyway, getting back to the role of women and women in business, especially for young women or people who are young women who are new entrepreneurs or new... Yeah, I think, uh, you know, um, your attitude and your momentum is what's going to carry, carry you through. Yes. And I always say to people, you must be careful who you listen to, mm. because a lot of what they say and what they, you know, the, the talk in the, in the uh, um, uh, what's the right word, the, um, in the hallways, you know, they say, uh, office silence, corridor of violence. <laughs> so, 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 you know, the talk in the corridor right. could right. be pretty destructive. You, you know, you, you need to 
you need to uh, selectively. Yeah, <laughs> You need, you need to be careful what conversations you are having with yourself and mm. why. Mm. Uh, and, and rather base it on reality as opposed to perception. Right. So make sure that you are basing your self-talk on reality and not perception. Mm. Get the facts. Don't be, don't, you, you need to ask and mm. you need to confront. Mm. I won't name names. There's a specific uh, uh, wonderful woman in, uh, with We Buy Cars. Mm -hmm. And with her first interview, now I must say, you know, she uh, she she's a phenomenal, uh, ex very accomplished person, and uh, she at the end of her interview, just as the in interview was ending, and it was over Zoom, she took the the laptop like this, and uh, and she said, "I'll tell you one thing, I've always won at everything I've done in my life mm. and I can come and win at your company as well. <laughs> That's basically what, what, right. what she said. Right. And she was really, really, uh, what's the right word? She, 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 she was very brave mm -hmm. and, and, and she wasn't shy to, you know, to, to tell the truth straight to your face. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I resonate with that because um, I sit with the most amazing man, mm. uh, men and women of the industry and people wonder how did she get that right? You are a, uh, an example of that and how did I get that right is exactly what you said. I'm not afraid to ask. I've got to ask. If you, there's, there's going to be two answers, yes or no. Mm. And I'm not afraid of the no. I'm not afraid of rejection because if you said no, I'd get your brother fun to sit here again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'm not afraid to ask. And I think yeah. and that's exactly what you said. Dirk, it has been so phenomenally enriching to have you here and sit next to me. I can go on forever, but I think we need to allow our viewers to know that you actually are a person um, and <laughs> you are a human being and you ha you, you, you're really not just a businessman. So who is Dirk and what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Do you have any spare time? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm a normal family man. I, I, I'm not very much into sports. Mm -hmm. I enjoy spending time with my family, mm -hmm. my two sons and my wife, mm -hmm. mostly. Otherwise, for hobbies, I would play chess. Ooh. And uh, to my wife's frustration, obviously. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I breed koi. Oh, nice. Well, I don't really breed, they don't breed much. Okay. But I'd rather say I keep koi. Okay. So I keep koi <laughs> and koi fish. Mm -hmm. And I fly uh, airplanes for hobby. Wow. Although, you know, these days it's uh, hard to find time to do that yes. as well. Yes. So, yeah, I. I, I you could say I'm a pilot and I, I was about to breed say koi that. and I, well, I don't breed koi, I keep koi. Okay. And I play chess okay. and <laughs> I read a lot. I oh, love reading. I, know I really, is. really love reading a lot. Uh, <laughs> to me, that's like a world, you know, oh, uh, a right. world of different things. Have you read the 5 a.m. club? No. Okay. <laughs> No, no. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I cannot even express um, in words, and I'm a journalist, but I can't express in words what this means to me um, and how much the time you've taken from work and everything that you're doing um, means to me that you're spending this time with me to help me um, to empower a woman and empower the industry. Um, you are revered, you are respected, um, but you're still human. You prove that now. <laughs> and um, I thank you so much. I thank you, Dirk, for sitting with me today. Dish, I think what you are doing here is most wonderful. I think what you're doing is most needed. Mm -hmm. I think women in South Africa need to be, they don't need to be empowered because they are empowered, yes. but they, they need a little bit of direction and a little bit of, a little bit of a... a Push, boost. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> I think your leadership skills, mm -hmm. uh, I've told you earlier that you have great leadership Aww. skills. You know, it's, it's all about initiative, taking initiative, being yourself, uh, have courage and don't be afraid to dream because um, if, if women just have the guts to be themselves, mm -hmm. it is, that is the marketable item, is yourself, oh. you know, to, 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 to believe in your own abilities, to believe that your unique viewpoint mm -hmm. is what is needed because it is what's, what's, what's needed. We, we, we need a little bit of everything and everybody in the mix. Uh, that's what makes us great. Yes. 
the, the, the diversity. Mm -hmm. I think not everybody has the same opinion or, or, or about leader, diversity, but mm -hmm. but we we need women in, in the workplace and we, we need female leadership in, in, in the workplace. And we need people to embrace good communication, we need people to speak up, we need women to speak up, mm -hmm. we need women to step in the place and take their position mm -hmm. and to step forward and make the world a beautiful place. Aww. Well, I have been secured now a job at We Buy Cars if this doesn't <laughs> work out. So <laughs> thank you so much, Dark. I appreciate you. And I can't <coughs> wait to have you to enlighten us in maybe the next season. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dark. Thank you, Dish. Appreciate it. Okay, and thank you, viewers. Thank you so much for following us on all our platforms. Our non-profit company is the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards, powered by MFC, a division of NetBank and the Talk the Talk Studios, powered by Sariti Solutions, are aimed at providing this platform to share our experiences and to educate the future generations to explore the endless and exciting career opportunities in motoring South Africa. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Women Talk, and please don't forget, we have thousands of vehicles on sale to choose from countrywide on our vehicle listing portal at www.womantalk.co.za and remember viewers we only advertise for trustworthy and bank reputable or bank accredited dealerships ladies and gents we urge you to use our platforms and be the change you wish to see you see it's important to understand that successful men like Dirk van der Waal accept invitations as a gesture towards change of effort and encouragement towards the inclusion of women in the motoring space. Leaders like Dirk helps us women identify, understand and verify purpose. He and his brother have developed a workforce that is agile and adaptable. They have proved through the hundreds of women in their team that reskilling uh, enables an organization to fill skill gaps and boost employee productivity, thus resulting in inevitable success. So let's build each other up, promote equal opportunity, and ladies, please never forget that the question isn't who's going to let me, it should always be who's going to stop me.